Your Honor. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Brian Moynihan of Bank of America, my clients, and this information is in our memorandum. Um, Overruled, Mr. Stewart. Please continue. I winged that one. <laughs> <laughs> you giving him the chance to? Oh, I get to control yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> So anyhow, so what we have here is we have this, this guy that wants to take a house for free and believes that he's somehow, you know, uh, obligated to get this house for free, doesn't want to pay for it. Uh, he made multiple payments um, over and over and over, and then when things change in his life, he just decides that he doesn't want to pay us anymore, my client anymore, and therefore he just wants to somehow get his house for free. And um, he's making all these crazy claims of terrorism, this, that, this. Bottom line, he owes money, and he is not wanting to pay. And that, that's, that's the ultimate goal of him, is just to get his house for free here today. Are you done? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, if, if I may, on, on rebuttal and cross, uh, we have an issue here where the defendant is uh, remiss in her statements concerning the deed of trust and the note and which one they're attempting to use to foreclose. In the non-judicial foreclosure, they were attempting to enforce a power of sale clause uh, in a contract that they've never specifically performed on. Uh, the, objection, Your Honor. The show me the note um, theory has been shot down by court after court. Um, this theory has been, you know, uh, proclaimed by this this uh, plaintiff, and um, you know, there's, there's plenty of court cases that have dismissed that theory. Okay, Your Honor. Uh, she just objected on something to agree with me. Uh, I, I, I do concur with the defendant. Therefore, she's lost the right to argue in perpetuity in this matter. There's, there is no discussion of the note. I was talking about the deed of trust. They did purchase the note and then discharge the obligation of the obligor in this matter being me. There's... She's actually misstating committing fraud upon the court because they commenced the non-judicial foreclosure proceeding pursuant to a power of sale clause. Mr. Stewart, trust. I'm going to allow her to uh, restate her uh, objection. Thank you, Okay, Your then, then, Your Honor, before we continue this, it's imperative that we ask in pursuant to Rule 17A, uh, for the defendant to state on and for the record whether or not they are the creditor and or the holder in due course. And I move this court pursuant to Rule 17A uh, for the defendant to state concisely and admit on and for the record whether they are the creditor and whether or not they are the holder in due course or I move this court to, to uh, default judgment in favor of plaintiff. Mr. Stewart, I, I, I might not have heard you. I'm not really sure what you're getting at here. In short, Your Honor, uh, I move this court on and for the record to state whether or not they are the creditor and to state whether or not they are the holder in due course. Ms. Con Contrell, can you uh, state on and for the record whether you are the creditor or the holder in due course? Your Honor, we're the holder in this matter, and we have all these documents here signed by the plaintiff, and, and we, you know, we've, we've shown up with our documents. We are, we are in a non-judicial state. Um, show me the loan doesn't work. Your Honor, I hereby stipulate and concur that the defendant is the holder. You must therefore rule in my favor a default judgment. They have acquiesced and admitted they are not the holder in due course and therefore not the creditor, and they must be removed immediately. Thank you. We get the bailiff in here. <laughs> with prejudice. Okay, do we see what happened here? See, we have an adversarial system. Welcome to America. It's kind of like marriage. That the issue being that she thought that she could confuse the judge and confuse the jury by saying she's the holder. Your first instinct there would be to argue. She's not saying she's older in due course. Okay, the problem with the, you get with an argument, those of you that have been married, it starts and it goes on, right? You don't want this to go on. You want to win. 
So you concur. Once you concur, the stipulations are there. It's, there's no longer controversy. Do we understand that? Okay, so I concurred that she is the holder, therefore not the holder in due course. Can they be here if they're not the holder in due course? No. Can they foreclose if they're not the holder in due course? Here, here's the expert. Can they foreclose if they're not the holder in due course? No, they can't. Okay. At that point, they're toast. Now, if I was to argue and say, hey, she, she won't say whether or not she's a holder in due course, we're going to continue this thing on for a while. You got her right there. And they will do that. They will play that game. You can end it right there. Do you get that? Okay, now we're going to switch. You've seen kind of the opening statement scenario. Uh, now, I'm going to bring Bill up to testify real quick. I'm going to do it real quick, okay, just so you get a feel of it. And then we're going to switch sides. And Cindy's going to be the plaintiff, and she's going to go into an in-depth questioning of Bill if we have the time. If not, we'll do that when we come back, but we should have time. 